Good morning, and um, we're going to get started in just a moment. Give everybody a moment to uh, log in and attend. Okay, let's start. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Vicki Winslow, Director of Support Services here at Serium Networks. Today, I will be discussing Avaya Manufacturer Support, how it's evolved over the years from both a pricing and required attach perspective, and how the current state of the offers look today. You can type your question in um, or hold them until the end, and I will get them answered. Okay, so a little bit of, uh, of history. In 2000, when Avaya spun from Lucent Technologies, they stated they had over 1 million customers. A large percentage of these customers had a post-warranty maintenance agreement with Avaya. These agreements comprised about 50% of Avaya's revenue and were priced on a component basis. Every cabinet, circuit pack, processor, uh, license, license bundle had a per unit price. Um, at this time, Avaya also had a 12-month warranty that included maintenance entitlements during the warranty. And, you know, we would often have a year of no maintenance billing after a new install or an upgrade. In 2003, Avaya created the utility pricing model. They moved from pricing against every component to a per X or a per user price. Um, this methodology applied to their three largest product lines, Definity CM, Messaging, and CMS. For the Definity CM product line, they counted ports, TDM using ECS equipped, meaning if it was seated in the switch and it was a 24-port pack, you paid maintenance on all 24 ports, or administered IP ports. They also charged an uplift for terminal replacement, um, certain uh, adders like an LSP or an SRP charge in the, in the utility model, um, and, you know, and some other, some other miscellaneous items. Messaging and CMS were based on per-administered users. Um, CMS also had a per-administered supervisor charge. So it wasn't based on licenses or components. The, the thought process was, hey, we're going to charge you on a per-user basis, add what you want, take away what you want. We're just going to true you up, and you'll pay maintenance on an entire system um, as you go forward. Contract terms were up to 48 months, from 12 to 48 months. You could pay monthly or annual, and with term distant counts um, that were automatically applied to those contracts. At this point, um, Avaya stopped serializing their customers' inventories. And, and again, there was this general message that records, install records are not as important as they once were. Um, maintenance would be granted at the system level and cover all the components um, within that system or the covered, you know, the covered devices. This also ushered in very complex rules around you know, the, the systems gathering the data for maintenance quotes and billings and true-ups, resulting in the quote process being dependent upon Avaya remote connectivity. Avaya still had the requirement for remote connectivity to have a maintenance contract, typically through a modem, and in theory, all being monitored by expert systems. Every maintenance option in the utility model had remote monitoring included as a part of the offer regardless if the system could be truly monitored or not. In 2008, Avaya changed their pricing model once again to the Software Support Initiative, SS, SS Plus U, and Hardware Maintenance. Avaya rolled um, a full-release subscription service into the reoccurring maintenance agreement for the first time. And, and that was kind of the bright spot in the software support initiative offer. Avaya uncoupled the few support that you pre previously had with utility-based pricing and moved to a per uh, right to use, 
pricing methodology for software, uh, but kept the per user, or the per X um, counting and pricing methodology for CM and MM. They did reduce the utility per user prices to offset um, to offset the SS or SSU cost on the software. Software support pricing was based upon percent of list of a new license. So it was really kind of considered a product house pricing methodology rather than a services pricing methodology at that time. Um, you know, the reduced utility per port or per unit pricing combined with the percent of list SS or SSU still resulted in um, about a 15 to 20 percent increase from fused or legacy or the full utility cost that began in 2003. Of course, Avaya considers anything to, um, you know, up to 20% as price neutral. Um, SS and SSU contract terms were limited to one or three years. They only build annually. Um, but during that time, Avaya continued to allow the hardware utility to be contracted for up to four years. Invoice monthly, annually, or totally prepaid. This caused varying end dates, um, lack of co-termination, and um, really fragmented maintenance that caused a lot of contract lapses. Um, you know, the SSI model, the biggest issue with the SSI model is that it uncoupled hardware and software support, and it required customers to purchase hardware maintenance to get expert systems or remote monitoring. There was a great deal of changes from Avaya during this entire time, including the quote process, contracting, uh, lack of co-termination. Uh, they put forth some required mandatory attach rules. Um, and, and this caused you know, general confusion with records and um, all, of, all of those elements that, that made it so, so complicated at that time. On July 1st of 2010, Avaya also changed their time and material policy. Customers who had an agreement covering their software would call Avaya for a TNM ticket and would be denied service because they only had SS or SS plus U. They were told that that didn't satisfy minimum manufacturer attach on the product. This same date, Avaya announced there would no longer be deferred billing during warranty periods. This is what is called day one billing as it, and is still in effect today. Billing begins on the first day of the month after, um, after order for an ad or the first day of the second month for a new system install. You know, the biggest impact due to the SSI model was uh, a shift away from expert systems by Avaya's customer base. Um, customers had to have uh, hardware maintenance to be monitored by expert systems. And this was made more complicated uh, at the time by modems no longer really being an acceptable remote connectivity option. VPN connectivity was being asked for and being you know required by our customers. And um, Avaya's polling tools, connectivity issues, modems resulted in fewer than ever customers connected to expert. Um, this is the point in time when many customers and, and business partners began to explore other support options, both really from a price and uh, a you know, support perspective. Okay. So by 2009, issues with the SSI model caused Avaya to explore really retooling their offer and rebranding it as Support Advantage. The base offer would support systems to the hardware level, including firmware updates, and satisfy uh, minimum manufacturer attach. So that, that you know, enabled customers who just had Support Advantage or Essential Preferred on the software to be able to still utilize Avaya from a hardware perspective or open a TNM ticket. But again, the offer left expert systems as an option. The base offers 
are support advantage essential or support advantage preferred, and preferred being the option that provides expert systems monitoring. Um, Avaya's connectivity has also evolved to an egress or an HTTPS model using their SAL technology. So support advantage, um, one of the, the big improvements was in the ordering and contracting uh, space, which, you know, beyond service delivery is, is really important to um, operationalize and, and manage the contracts. It, it allowed varied hardware support options by locations, which up to this point um, had really strong, stringent rules. And even in a networked enterprise, um, allowing different remotes to have hardware or no hardware on-site or no, no on-site, allowing co-termination um, at the sold-to level and synchronizing billing dates. That's really a, a big a big uh, improvement because you as a customer would be able to receive one invoice annually for your Avaya manufacturer support and not have multiple invoicing um, events throughout the year that you receive going, okay, now what is this for? Why do I have 70 CM licenses for support here and another 140 coming in the end of December? So this, uh, this was another vast improvement that, that they made. Um, support Advantage is priced on a one-to-one -one basis with an applicable user right to use, just like the software support initiative offer. Uh, hardware maintenance, though, is based on a per server, per gateway, and a single charge covers all components in a, in a covered system. Support Advantage continued Avaya's mandatory attach policies they introduced in 2010, requiring support or blocking customer access to maintenance commands, source codes, Avaya engineering support, the ability to open a trouble ticket, uh, service packs, patches, updates, correction notices. Um, Avaya also states in, in their documentation that having support um, is in compliance with your uh, Avaya end user license agreement and Avaya's intellectual property rules. The Avaya cancellation policy also uh, remains unchanged. Customers are required to pay for the entire year in which you would cancel. In 2006, uh, Continuant refused to sign a non-compete document with Avaya they became an unauthorized maintenance provider and filed a lawsuit against Avaya for putting keys or proprietary blocks in software that would exclude an unauthorized provider or customer without maintenance to access maintenance permissions, making post-sales services only available from Avaya um, or one of their authorized business partners. In March of 2010, Continuant won this antitrust lawsuit against Avaya. Both sides did their best to spin the decision with Avaya stating, <clears throat> um, the vast majority of our business is unaffected by this case. This case generally concerns access to customer level maintenance commands on certain systems. It does not cover access to source code, Avaya engineering support, expert systems, and other such diagnostic tools new or expanded features, upgrades, or additional licenses. Only Avaya and our authorized business partners can provide those. Um, in our review of the documents and, and the result of the decision, what it really comes down to is that it allows customers who purchased or upgraded a PBX between January 1st, 1990, and April 30th of 2008, the use of software commands for maintenance functions and MSPs, also known as um, on-demand maintenance commands. It, it, you know, allows the ability to busy out station and trunks or system and processor. The, the affected systems or the applicable systems to this, to this lawsuit are System 75, Dicinity, MultiVantage, and um, some very early releases of Communication Manager. The net result of the lawsuit is MSPs being available for legacy systems 
without Avaya support. It doesn't really have any bearing on attached rules for current to N-2 releases. A fairly common experience for customers who we work with and support who at one time have been self-maintainers or um, had continuant support is that continuant as a business has a vested interest in keeping their clients on uh, legacy release levels. Okay. So that all takes us uh, just about to today. Um, in 2014, Avaya had uh, two new policies. First, they changed their reinitiation policy for lapsed coverage. Previously, contracts that had been lapsed beyond 30 days would be subject to a 25% penalty fee. That fee would be waived if the coverage had lapsed uh, longer than 12 months. The new policy is contracts that are lapsed for longer than 30 days will have a 25% penalty, but that's going to scale up every quarter to a maximum of 100% of the first year value. Um, and, and with no waiver ability for just coming back on a welcome back basis. The only exception to this policy is if you upgrade to the most current release um, of the applicable software. So if you're a CM5 and your coverage has lapsed, um, you know, they will charge you up to 100% of the first year value to bring that CM5 under maintenance. If you're a CM5 with elapsed coverage and you upgrade to a CM7, that, um, that is automatically waived and you won't have any penalty to purchase support going forward. The second announcement, uh, big announcement in, uh, in actually in this year, is that Avaya is requiring support advantage preferred and upgrade advantage, so SA preferred and UA, for all of their most current release level products. Again, that's most current release level, so CM7, CC7, and others as they become available. Um, either upgraded or designed as new. So, so let's take it through a scenario. If, if you have support advantage essential today with upgrades and you upgrade to the latest release, Avaya will allow the support advantage essential contract to stay in place. But they'll add entitlements um, to, to your contract that will allow you to have uh, the benefits of preferred. You'll be able to have expert systems. You will be able to have all of all of the different elements you see on the screen. But you'll still be in that support advantage essential contract. You'll still be saying, uh, paying the same price. You'll still have the same end date. But you'll be able to utilize those preferred entitlements and 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 try, you know try try dipping your toe in in the uh, remote monitoring expert systems environment so upon contract renewal those are in place you're using them you're hopefully seeing the value and um, and we'll be you know ready to go with those so you know support advantage has expert systems alarm monitoring and re resolution uh, proactive alerts of network issues both the PSTN and NIP the Avaya diagnostic server with SLA Mon technology, um, which is something that we as Serium have has are you know found to be um, really valuable. Also, hop by hop QoS testing, uh, endpoint diagnostics, um, SAL policy server, and uh, global license portability. That they're saying. Um, you know, is a little bit of a new way for them to do some license moves, which which is kind of a good thing. Um, you know, so that that takes us through today. So, you know, as we look at the current release offers and and what support advantage uh, will do for our customer base is um, important for you as our customers. And in here at Serium, we analyze your attach. We analyze your needs, and we have the ability to tailor a maintenance agreement 
um, in the best, most cost-efficient way. You know, the contracting models with Avaya are retail, wholesale, and co-delivery. And, um, you know, retail customers contract with Avaya directly and, and get all service delivery uh, for that contract uh, with Avaya. They submit their payments um, to Avaya in the wholesale model. Cerium negotiates the contract on your behalf with Avaya. You sign a contract with Cerium, um, and in some models, Avaya still provides the service delivery with co-delivery support. Um, with Cerium Networks, we contract with you. We provide really the comprehensive services using Avaya as a Tier 4 backbone type resource. In that model, uh, Cerium, like I said, is, is doing the comprehensive support, but Avaya manufacturer support is still required with co-delivery contracts, and it's, it's required for all of those reasons we talked about. Um, as well as agreements we as a business sign with Avaya. So um, Cerium has integrated preferred support into our deliverables because it is going to be a requirement. Uh, remote connectivity, expert systems, they were always the backbone of Avaya support agreements. And Avaya has realized that Uncoupling that was a very bad move, and it, it caused a shift in their customer base. So they're trying to, you know, do a retraction and and build value around around the expert systems. So um, hopefully, this has provided some information on where Avaya has been, uh, where Avaya is going. The support advantage uh, requirement change is really just a throwback to the way Avaya did do business. And um, and we're more than willing to, to help go through anything you have questions on. So again, my name is Vicki Winslow. I'm more than happy to engage as I'm needed. My email address, vwinslow at seriumnetworks.com. And it was a pleasure speaking with you today. So we're gonna try to get some of these uh, questions answered now.